Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for Big Potato Games What's Next? A one to four player party game, takes about roughly an hour to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. And in the game What's Next is uh, kind of an interesting one here. You're gonna have three different stories, uh, Blinky's Great Escape, The Skyscraper Caper, and The Drums of Koala Cave. And you're going to pick one of these guys here, you're going to organize the game layout, and you're going to go through the story. The story is going to entail you to draw location cards and event cards and hopefully item cards and get all the way through if you can without toppling your little tower of terror here. As you make mistakes, you'll increase your little tower and if it falls over, you're out. You'll utilize a sundial or a dial, depending on the type of game you're playing, to determine whose turn it is and what's going to happen. And you're going to be using mini games in the game. Maybe you'll be flicking things, maybe you'll be drawing from a bag in order to find certain things, or perhaps you'll be creating a puzzle. Ooh. And in the game, Game, basically, if you're able to deduce and uh, solve certain puzzles throughout the game and certain challenges, you will move on. Each player is going to get a location card, finish that location, and pass it along. If you complete one story, you can go to the next and the next, and each playing story is replayable based on the choices that you make and the decisions that you choose to do throughout the game of what's next. We'll talk about how to set the game up, and of course, how to play, and my review. To set up the game of what's next, you're going to First, open the box and select one of the three different stories. I went ahead and selected Drums of Koala Cave. Then you're going to take out the item cards, the event cards, and the location cards, and place them next to each other with a discard pile in range. Select the spinner for that specific story, and in this one it's going to be the sun one, as well as, of course, the flicking space and the flicking token. Set aside the item tokens, and they'll go into this bag here, and then go ahead and place all of your puzzle pieces next to that bag. Finally, you'll take out all the terror pieces and you will place them, or peril pieces, and place them next to uh, an area of the game where people can all reach. Then you're going to make sure that you take off the top location card and hand that to a player that is going to start the game off with and make sure that your sundial is set to the furthest location away from the moon. Then your game is ready to go and you can go ahead and play <laughs> challenge the koalas on the island. Gameplay for what's next is rather simple. Uh, basically each of these decks is going to have a front and back card and these cards are just going to block the cards so that you cannot see them because as you draw they're going to have front and back on each of the cards and to begin the game you'll simply move the card off the top of the deck you will draw the first card and you will read it sometimes they will tell you to flip them other times they will tell you to move to a new location and sometimes they will tell you to draw an event and after you've finished that location card, you will pass the uh, play to the next player. When you pass the play, you will take the sundial or whatever dial it is you're using and rotate it one clockwise. And that's it. You'll move on to the next location. That, uh, that player is going to then read that location, do anything on that card, whether it be events or flipping the card over, attempting to get item cards. And then once again, you'll rotate the dial. You will then have the next player in turn order take a location card and read it. And you will go throughout the game attempting to get to the very end of the stack of location cards and finish the story. However, there's some unique little things in the game which I'll talk about. The first thing here is the peril pieces. Whenever the game says so, you'll place a peril piece out and you're going to be stacking them one at a time to create a little bit of a tower. You'll start with two pieces, then you'll start placing pieces on top of those pieces. And if at any point in time you have to place a peril piece and your tower falls over, you're out, you lose the game. And that's how those guys work. And they're gonna be found in the location cards and event cards and most of the time they're going to happen whenever you fail a challenge. Then you have puzzle pieces. Sometimes you'll need to recreate a painting or maybe put together some type of mural or whatever it might be. Maybe you're trying to uh, re fix a hammer. You will then be forced to take these pieces here, attach them onto a card and try and form uh, that specific card's shadow. And I'll explain how that works. You can see the, the example I'm showing you right now. Uh, then, of course, there's the next thing here, which is you're going to be using the item bag. Uh, whenever you have to search in this bag, you'll be pulling out a piece, looking at it. If it's not the right one that you need, putting it back into the bag, and you'll pull until you find the right item. Now, most of the things here are timed, and if you ever run out of time in the game, uh, you're going to fail that specific event uh, based on that location. 
And uh, then, of course, if you succeed at certain challenges, you'll get new item cards. And item cards you can utilize in certain ways. They will help you increase your timer. Sometimes they'll give you a kind of a benefit to certain challenges. And other times, if you want to take the challenging mode on, you will be able to save those items for the end of the game. And if you have them, you'll get a bonus uh, to your point scoring. Now, in general, all you have to do is get through the location deck. And if you can do so, you win. But, of course, there's an advanced play where maybe you need to gather specifically the glowing feather and the professor's keys uh, from the item deck in order to successfully complete your challenge mode of that specific game mode. Uh, the last little thing in the game is, as you rotate the style, there's a point to it, eventually you're going to hit a specific spot on it. And in this case, for this specific game, it's the moon. When you do that, instead of drawing uh, the next card in order, so if you go one, two, three, four, and you're on the fifth location, instead of drawing the fifth location's uh, sun side, you'll actually go ahead and take uh, the other side of the deck and you will look for number five and you will take the back side. And the back side has a unique night location with unique uh, storyline changes in the game. So the game will change based on whether it is day or whether it is night. And most times, in most cases, the night phase is going to be a little more challenging or require you to place peril down. Uh, and that's pretty much the idea of the game. Whenever you are going through the cards, make sure you read them fully and finish any events that they ask you to finish and of course gather any item cards that they ask you to gather. Now I'll explain more as far as the events go and how they work and the item cards in my review of the game which we'll talk about right now. At its core what's next is a storytelling game and it has three stories with alternating paths. Have you ever seen one of those choose your own adventure books? I know I have. I'm about 35 now and when I was a kid they were all the rage especially the goosebumps ones where you go okay go turn to page 34 turn to page 36 when you add ask questions or make certain choices. This is kind of like that. You're going to be going through certain locations and based on the location's choice uh, that it will give you, you can go ahead and choose to do something. Now, maybe you want to uh, investigate the, the wrecked, wrecked canoe or do you want to head into the jungle and you can choose two or three, location two or three. And then after that, maybe you can go ahead and head into the jungle or continue along the beach or follow the parrot or stick to the trail. And you're making these choices and as you do, you'll be choosing certain locations. Certain locations are going to actually ask you to uh, uh, solve certain events or gain certain items. Maybe it will tell you to take a rope or perhaps it's going to say to try to fix the broken compass and if so you'll look through the event card deck based on the specific uh, number that it tells you and you'll pull out cards. Uh, there's a lot of different types of events in this game. Uh, a lot of them are going to involve you flicking, putting together puzzles, and uh, pulling items from a bag. And this one here is a circle and it's going to ask you to fill in that circle with these little tokens here and they'll give you a certain amount of time, 30 seconds. It will tell you whether you complete it or what happens when you fail. And uh, if you're able to successfully achieve most of these guys, it will either progress you along the story faster or it's going to give you items that will be useful to you throughout the game, whether it be to uh, accomplish the bonus mode of the game or just to use them to make the game a little easier for you, which is actually rather nice. Uh, there's some other cards too, as far as the events go. We'll go ahead and look at a couple of those here. Uh, one of them is like a flipping, a uh, flicking. You take this little guy here. This one here says that you need to attempt to climb the tree. Well, you will take uh, this guy here and you're going to place it on the black area and you're going to take your fingers or you can go ahead and push it uh, along this track here. And if you can get to wherever it tells you to get, maybe it'll tell you an area between here and here or here and here. And if you can manage to get it into those areas, you'll successfully accomplish this specific mini game. And um, everything is kind of nice with this game too, because you get a certain amount of uh, extra tries. You can kind of practice before you just go ahead and flick. And uh, it tells you on the cards based on how many attempts you can practice with before you actually have to accomplish your mission because they all have a different range of difficulty and things you'll need to do. And so that's kind of a nice little breather. Uh, speaking of difficulty, what's also nice about these games is uh, the, this one here, the Koala Cave one, is the easiest one. But if you want to go ahead and jump into a little more com complex or more challenging game mode, there's the Skyscraper Caper and there's Blinky's Great Escape. And you can play these guys here. What I also like about these games is the story arcs. You can change the way the story is kind of told. Most of the time the endings are fairly similar if you can successfully accomplish it, but how you do so, where you go, and what you gather is going to be different uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, this is going to have a limited number of replayability uh, because basically after you've comp completed it, do you want to go back through it and accomplish it again a different route? Maybe or maybe not. For me personally, once I accomplish one of them, I'd just rather move on to the next one and then pass the game along after I've played all three 
three of them because I would have learned the ending. But for other people, they might want to actually gather all the bonuses. The bonuses being the item cards, if you can go through and keep those cards, um, gather them through certain events or whatever, then you can kind of 100% uh, the game. And a lot of my friends, they like to 100% video games, and if you're those type of people, then this might be more replayability for you. But those of you who just go through the stories and be done with them, that's one of those things where you'll probably play three to six games, maybe twice a piece, and then you'll pass this on to a new person because the game is fully replayable. There's nothing that gets ripped apart or torn apart like other escape room style games, even though this feels kind of similar, and it will give somebody else enjoyment. It's kind of like playing that Neil Patrick Harris game, or it's, it's the one game where you, after you've played through the whole thing, you kind of pass along. That's probably what I would recommend with this guy here. That being said, this game is a lot of fun, has really high quality components, has great artwork and great visual design. I love the graphic design and the gameplay is very simple and very easy to play. I can explain this game, teach this game, and play this game in roughly about 45 minutes to an hour without any drawbacks. Most people understand how it works. One small caveat, sad negative aspect to this game is you do require a completely flat playing surface when you're stacking these peril pieces. If you do not have a very flat playing surface, like my table here, it leans a little bit this way, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but uh, these guys are eventually going to fall backwards a little sooner than I would like, and thusly it's a little more challenging for us. Maybe it's added difficulty bonus, I suppose. Um, and another thing too to note is uh, when pulling pieces from the bag, this is the most difficult challenge because you're having to look, feel this bag and pull out, and you usually have like 30 to 60 seconds, and you have to try to figure out which ones go to um, the specific card that you're going for. This is definitely more challenging than the rest of them, but I had a good time playing all of them. I love all the different types of mini games. Most of them don't require me to play rock, paper, scissors or do something funny. They actually involve some type of physical challenge that I can kind of successfully get better with as I play the game, which is what I really, really liked about this. Um, they, they're very earth conscious. They don't use a lot of plastic in this game. They attempted to make this, I think it's also a one tree game. I'm not sure if this is the same one as that as the previous one. But I, I like the fact that they're eco-friendly and they're smart about it. And all the cards are high quality and everything is really, really beautiful with this game. Even the box uh, is excellent as well. I take this guy out here and it's got some beautiful explanation of what's inside the game. Additional artwork. This, I believe, is the same artist who did the uh, jigsaw puzzle. And then it's got all the spaces in which you place all the pieces back. And it's very, very easy to un unpack and play once again. This is a solid recommendation for me if you enjoy party style escape room games, if you don't mind the lack of replayability, if you do not mind the fact that you have to play on a stable playing surface, which you would think is a no brainer, but I guess I, of all the tables I've played on, at least half of them have been a little crooked, so be aware of that. You have to get perfect level, like Rick and Morty would say. Overall though, a solid fun family experience. I highly recommend What's Next if you're looking for this type of game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game What's Next by Big Potato Games. If you're interested in learning more, go ahead and check out the link down below in the description where we'll show you this game along with all the rest of their games. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and check out our live stream, which happens every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. In fact, this one would actually probably make for a very good live stream game because you can easily see everything from the top-down perspective. You can also go ahead and join us on Patreon for $1 every single month. You're going to be entered into a raffle where you can win a game once a week in order to uh, successfully uh, uh, pull from this little this little thing here. We pull a ball out. If it's your ball, you win. You get a free ball for a buck a month. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> you can also go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification button to see more of our videos, to see more games reviewed just like this one here from great publishers. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to seeing what's next with you next time. That was a great outro, huh? What's next with you next time? That's so good. <laughs>